Welcome back, and thanks for tuning in to another episode of Lab Padre's Starbase Weekly Updates. Now let's get down to business. Starting things off at Port Canaveral this week, Falcon 9 Booster B-1051 was lifted off Just Read the Instructions and placed on the docks. Continuing the post-mission process flow, the booster was lifted off the dockside stands and laid on the horizontal transporter for inspection and refurbishment. With 1051 safely at home, JRTI was towed out back to sea for the next mission. At Starbase, crews began the removal of Booster 4 from the OLM with an extension of the stand's alignment pins. Not long after, with crews standing by with muscle and rope at the ready to keep Super Heavy steady, Marvin, SpaceX's LR-11000, lifted Booster 4 off and away from the orbital launch mount before swinging it over to the awaiting transport stand. Crews completed this move in little over an hour. While the booster was airborne, the booster transport pins were retracted prior to the placement on the stand. Once the Super Heavy vehicle was attached to the stand, and with a little help from a crane and man lifts, crews brought out and installed a plate for transportation over the booster's quick disconnect panel. With the vehicle now fully connected to the ground infrastructure, Marvin's load spreader was disconnected and the booster was left to stand on its own. Just an hour later, the freestanding booster was relocated to the booster storage area southwest of the retired landing pad. Early the next morning, Booster 7 made its debut peeking out of the high bay into the morning sun, but just 30 minutes later, the booster went back inside. The seemingly shy booster made two trips in and out in total. COPVs, or Composite Overwrapped Pressure Vessels, are used to store high pressure gases in Starship and Super Heavy. This truck pulling into the launch site is carrying eight of them. Not too much later, and now sporting a quick disconnect plate on its trailer, the COPV carrying truck finished its stop and departed the launch site. The facilities at Starbase are constantly changing and expanding. A new structure next to the guardhouse is being built and the fence needed to go. The new structure is a replacement to the shipping container walls as storage and workspaces. With the way cleared, construction crews got to work installing the siding on the new facility. Over at the build site, a nose cone barrel section, possibly for Starship 24, peeked out past the low bay. Not much later, a second barrel section was spotted making its way out from the fabrication tents. The nose cone barrel soon retreated back out of sight into tent 3 for additional work. New QD hardware was added to the can crusher, which was brought to the launch site to simulate flight loads on the booster. A rocket propellant farm is rarely a quiet place. There was plenty of LN2 venting to be seen as the stored propellants are kept cold and pressed. Early in the morning on the 31st, workers began preparing for a big move by laying down white traffic cones on the road. At 5.20 a.m., Booster 7 departed the high bay and slowly began to make its way down Highway 4. The new booster, built for 33 Raptor 2s, also has numerous internal structure changes, including new header tanks and additional reinforcement into the liquid methane tanks, along with a new vertical CPV arrangement under its new strake-like veins on the outside. Let's watch as Booster 7 continues its journey towards the launch site. After a little over an hour of travel, Booster 7 finished its journey, joining Booster 4 at the launch site. The new vehicle was brought over to Marvin and was soon attached to the crane load spreader. And there you have it. Thanks again for watching Lab Padre's Starbase Weekly Updates. If you've enjoyed the video and want to see more, click the subscribe button and hit the bell to be notified when our next video drops. See you all next week. Lab Padre out.